this part too. It would have been a lot better.
students that need extra help with reading. We focus on reading and comprehension, vocabulary, all kinds of fun stuff. We have a snack to start off. We do gym. So yeah, it, we make it fun for the kids. Okay, thank you. What is so unique about our bank? <coughs> So I think that's very unique. It's very convenient that you can make a deposit at school in, in your work. That's great. Okay. Okay. Come in the morning and make a deposit at school. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sounds a lot better when we cut it in school. I promise. <laughs> so I'll post it so you guys can hear it better.
School is great because teachers ask a lot of good questions. <laughs> So I apologize, and we tried that at school, the sound worked a whole lot better. But I will post that on Facebook, so if you guys would like to go on and see it. Um, they did a really good job. I'm super proud of these guys. Honestly, the only the only direction that I gave them was just to go out and, and, and interview people about what they loved about AP Word or what made us unique and what made us special. They did all of the work, and then the, the kids that edited it, they, they did everything. The only thing that, that we had to help with was um, on some of our hashtags, we had a couple spelling errors that we had to help correct. But, the rest of it was all was all student back. So super proud of these guys. They did an awesome job. So. Board members, any questions for the students or the principal? Before we leave, I would like to introduce our staff. Um, we have quite a few staff, and I'm super proud of these guys too. Um, if you were staff, will you guys stand up? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Anna, do you want to start in the back and just introduce yourself and what you do? Yes. I'm Anna Katana, and I'm the school counselor. Uh, Jenny Fogler, first group. Mary, we can start with you. Mary Archibauer, newcomers. Um, Bard Mercer, first grade. Penny Berg, speech language pathologist. Delaney Gilson, fifth grade. Megan Sloan, fifth grade. Caitlin Cruz, art. Melissa Barrett, second grade. Sarah Merle, associate principal. Maria Martinez, kid and one. Consensus on uh, uh, playground activities and hairlines. Uh, I like the uh, the amount of interest in math. Do you all have? Is there a, a math game process that I glean out of that uh, that gets them excited about, or they're just plain good teachers? Guys, both? what do you think? Both. Math, both. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think. The iPads, um, you know, obviously fourth and fifth grade all have their own iPads, and so there's a lot of activities that they've been able to do. And there's been a lot of really cool activities that, that I've seen in the classrooms um, through that. But but also the other classrooms that don't have them one to one, we've got enough that that they have an opportunity to use them quite a bit, and, and they do a lot of fun activities on there. Hey, Tim, you had a question? Uh, not a question, just a, a request, if I might. Uh, I wonder if we could have the parents stand up. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the parents, it's, uh, you know, it's warms my heart to see parents involved in their school's education and taking time out to come and watch the presentation. So, thank you. They're a phenomenal group of kids, and we have an awesome staff. I'm super proud of both. So, and our parents are great. Obviously, the reason the kids are great is because we have great parents. Okay. Any any other comments or questions? I'll look forward to seeing it online tomorrow. All right. We hope to have it up tomorrow afternoon on our Facebook page. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if you have the students come by, yep. we'll just... Guys, come by one more time. If you haven't shaken before, can come on through? And if you have, but you're going through for a second, please go ahead. <laughs>
I have a second to that motion? I believe that involves consent uh, agenda item E1 through uh, E5B. So, is there a second? Any more a second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on consent agenda motion? Okay, Tim. So, uh, Mr. Chair, just a quick question on item B4, A, B, and C, uh, all three of those bids were rejected. Is there a certain reason they were? I think after reviewing them, they decided that they wanted to um, write bid specs that actually more defined what they were actually looking for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I could continue that, um, was that in part due to the difference, each one of them being a little bit different than what was submitted? Variability and the I think that was part of it. They had such a wide range of, of things that they were able to look at, and I think it somewhat helped them to narrow down the scope of what they wanted. Um, and so to be fair to all bidders, we wanted to be able to put out specs that work, work towards what we want, and all bidders would have the opportunity to bid on similar vehicles. And that will put us behind. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve the consent agenda. Or say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay. Pass. Uh, discussion items. I think we're ready for agenda item F curriculum reports, uh, high school and middle school added program. I'm just going to kick off the introductions a little bit. Um, AVID started in the high school, and Jenny may correct me on this, but I believe it was the 2010-2011 school year. Um, and so it was still at the old Garden City High School. And last year, it was implemented in the middle schools, but a little bit of a later start. We got a grant late through, um, what was it, Penny County? Penny County. Livewell, Penny County, and they helped fund part of that, and we funded the rest, so it took us a little bit longer to get recruitment and such kicked off at the middle schools last year. But I've got middle school representatives and high school representatives that are going to talk to you a little bit about AVID and what we're seeing in terms of results school-wide participation, some of the strengths and some of the struggles that we're facing. But um, overall, a solid program. I've had the opportunity to go to several um, AVID training instructional strategies are spot on and they are strategies that any teacher in any classroom can utilize to um, engage students in higher thinking skills, active engagement in lessons, and just solid teaching strategies for any curriculum. So I'll let Jacob go first. He's Kenneth Henderson's avid teacher. And while Kenneth is coming up, I might pose a question to Yes. You. Jacob. Oh, I'm sorry, Jacob. Uh, Beg your pardon. Um, what does AVID stand for? So AVID stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination. <coughs> and it, essentially that kind of tells you of what you need to know in terms of we, we want to advance these students to uh, post-secondary training. Um, and, we, and they have to do so through their own determination. Um, I think the goal of AVID is to give them the skills uh, to do that. The population that we, that we serve are students that are generally considered to be in the academic middle, um, students who we feel like have uh, college and post-secondary uh, potential if given the proper support. Um, and that's really what AVID strives to do and that's why it's been so powerful for uh, the Garden City community because it, it speaks to a, a need in our district, uh, I think. So um, I'll just highlight some of the things that we're doing, I'm the AVID elective instructor at Kenneth Anderson. This is my second year doing that as well as FACS uh, education. Um, as, as Renee mentioned, we were uh, kind of rushed in implementation in 17-18. Uh, so we finished the year with eight students. Uh, this year we've had some more time to refine our selection process. Uh, we got applications out to all seventh graders and coming seventh graders. Um, so that allowed us to select from a pool of roughly 30 applicants. Um, so this year we have 13 uh, in the AVID elective, uh, and that breaks down into 12 seventh graders and one and one eighth grader who reminded me that she was an eighth grader when I told her that, oh, it's great to have all you seventh graders 
No, no, no. <laughs> so I have one, I have one eighth grader. Um, and as Renee also mentioned, the Abbott elective is based on uh, five areas that the lessons draw from. The, the, we use the uh, acronym WICKER. And those are writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. Uh, in the elective, in the first semester of middle school implementation, we focus on organization in the form of agendas, uh, planners, and a, and a binder, which I'm sure the high school will talk a little more about perhaps, but the, the binder is a key aspect to it. Organizing their, uh, all of their school materials into one, one place. Um, in terms of introducing AVID to the school at large, we have undertaken this year a college banner project, which I've got an example here. Dustin Algren was nice enough to uh, loan us, loan me his example. Um, something they've done at the high school for a number of years with great success. Um, essentially, AVID students uh, interviewed KH teachers as to their <coughs> educational backgrounds, um, and we are teaming with the yearbook staff to make uh, those banners that will be hung outside of each of the doors uh, of the classrooms. And it is our hope that this will lead to uh, what is called a, a college attending culture uh, within the school and spark conversations, not only with AVID students, but with, with, with students throughout the school as to the importance of college, what college experience might be like, just to begin to have those, have those conversations. And that's our focus for the first semester. The second semester focus will be, uh, in terms of introducing AVID again to the school at large, will be uh, uh, some professional development on focused note taking, which is something that we do a lot of in the AVID elective, and um, we feel like all uh, content areas can benefit from that. And like Renee had mentioned, these are essentially break down to educational best practice in a lot of cases, and, and have a really strong foundation and we've seen exceptional uh, buy-in from this group uh, in the second semester, so we're, we're really excited to see it grow and, and move forward. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thanks for being here. Uh, maybe we'll hear from the high school and then maybe field some questions. Okay. We'll be around. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Sawyer from Forest Good, who teaches their Abbott Jacob did a good job describing what we do at the middle school level for us. So, um, our numbers wise, we had we served about 27 kids in the two years we've had it. Um, this year, we have about we have an equal amount of seventh and eighth graders uh, in the program. We've got uh, six seventh graders and seventh eighth graders. So, uh, five of those eighth graders are ones I had last year. So we did have quite a few of them that were in the program last year stay in the program. Um, we have two new ones, two of them chose not to take it again. So uh, we have the same number as we had from that group last year to this year. Um, for recruitment, we included in all our enrollment info this year, we took it on um, the tours to the intermediate centers and, and we discussed enrollment stuff there. So that information has been made available. Uh, I believe we sent information home over this through our Skyward program as well. Um, so we, we tried to get it out to as many parents as possible. Um, we have not had the numbers to the point where we need to screen applicants or anything like that. Anyone who wants to take AVID at this point, um, we're allowing to take AVID. Not all of them necessarily. Some of them are kind of above what Abbott is searching for in those middle students and things like that, but we felt it wasn't in our best interest to tell turn them on and stuff like that. So we, we've taken on all students that were interested in, in uh, doing Abbott. Um, currently, our future numbers, we look for increases in the future as more awareness gets out there about Abbott and, and what it offers. Um, for our class at Horace Good, we do a lot of I, I focus on a lot of interpersonal skills with it as well because as they go forward into college, you're going to have a lot of um, group work, problem solving. So we do a lot of group problem solving, group activities. They present pretty frequently to the class. Now, granted, they're classes of six and seven, so they're pretty small, but it kind of eases them into kind of being more comfortable presenting uh, 
tutor classmates. Um, and as for the school culture, making it a college-going culture, we, uh, Michigan and Oakley's kind of taken one of our math teachers, kind of spearheaded the movement to uh, get signs out on teachers' doors for the colleges they've attended and, and where they went and what they went for. So where they got their bachelors, where they got their masters, uh, for some where they got their associates as well. So, uh, so we're trying to get. And we last year, towards the end of the year, we also sent emails to different colleges um, asking for college banners, posters, that sort of stuff. So students got to practice in writing professional correspondence to uh, a university of their choice. And we just made sure not to read the <coughs> blow up K-State and Kansas inboxes. So, um, so that's kind of what we've been focusing on in Morris Street Center. Thank you for that presentation. If you have a round for questions here. came from liberal and they, a demonstration school is the highest level you can reach. Um, so I'm so excited to have her. Um, and with all great people, they get stolen <coughs> to do lots of great things. So he stole her to recruit. Uh, so here I am. Um, we also have Heather Graniker and she is new and she taught in an avid middle school in Arkansas, I believe. Um, and so she has some experience with Abbott as well, so it's exciting to have some people with some fresh ideas, and she's teaching our freshmen and our seniors. Uh, Dana Johnson is in her third year of teaching our sophomores, and Tanya Bondurant is in her second year of teaching our juniors. Uh, so we have a fairly new staff, but um, a lot of great ideas. It's really exciting. Um, we just have a really good team. Um, one thing that we've done school-wide is on Friday, we had a... Um, a professional development opportunity for all teachers in the high school and uh, Mr. Nor Nordby endorsed that all teachers must attend the AVID session so that was great we had high participation um, so we decided our two focuses for this year um, AVID has four domains systems instruction leadership and culture we decided to focus on culture and instruction at the high school this year we feel like those are the two places where you can make the most effective changes um, so in our PD, we focused on culture and instruction. Um, so to talk about culture, um, we talked with them about a um, book by Carol Dweck called Mindset. It's a great recommendation, great read. Um, and it talks about a growth versus fixed mindset. I will let you know, um, at least from my experience, if you read that book, it'll take you about a month to stop putting everybody on a scale of growth or fixed mindset and start judging everybody. <laughs> takes a little bit to get over that. Um, but a growth mindset is someone who believes that they can always learn and always improve and always do better. Whereas a, someone with a fixed mindset believes, these are the skills I have and this is how I'm gonna be. Um, so we talked with the teachers about using growth mindset language with students. Um, so instead of saying, you know, um, oh, you gotta see, sorry, you know, look, you did pretty well, but you could improve. Let's look at you know your sentence structure here. What, let's look at how we could do that differently. I know you could write this better if you did it again. Let's have a second chance. Let's work on that. Um, so we talked a lot about growth mindset. And like I said, I'd highly recommend Mindset by Carol Dweck if you're interested in some extra reading. Um, and then we also taught three new instructional strategies that our teachers hadn't seen before. Um, at least not as a whole. So one we did was a diner menu, which is a strategy for differentiation. So um, students have to order their assignments. Um, so they have an appetizer and everybody like in your group has to share the responsibilities of your appetizer, but they have um, different appetizers you can choose from. So different group projects they could do. And then they have to choose one entree, which is a big project that they have to do on their own or a big assignment. Um, and then they have sides and they need two sides, which are some smaller ones. And then the dessert is the optional higher learning um, option. So it's a great um, 
great method for self-differentiation. All of the things at each level, you know, the entrees are all at the same level of rigor. Um, there's not an assignment that's more or less rigorous than the other assignments. We try to work on making sure those are all the same. Um, but some, a student who's more visual um, versus better at, more interested in reading um, or more hands-on, we can have different assignments that meet the same idea. So we talked with our teachers about differentiation with the Dyna menu. Um, we also talked about a, a, a strategy called Tableau, which is kind of a scary one for our teachers. <laughs> um, it's a strategy that helps students visualize concepts. So you have the students um, get up and show a concept. They have to be like frozen in time. And then they have a narrator who talks and explains it. And then each student can unfreeze for a moment and explain how they're feeling, if it's like a historical situation. Or um, we did an example with parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Um, and then the person would explain, you know, I don't touch, I do touch. So it can be really short, um, but just having students think through and visualize some concepts. Um, we also um, researched, re research says that the last five minutes of every class period is the most wasted time of a classroom culture. Um, so we gave our teachers an exit board. It has 12 different strategies that require no preparation um, in for, to end that take five minutes. So you can end, a, end your class, sum up a class in five minutes, um, and we gave them all dice. So you can roll the dice, and the kids love rolling the dice to figure out what assignment they have to do at the end. Um, and then they, you just have to do that assignment, no preparation, and you don't waste those last five minutes. Um, so those were the three instructional strategies that we shared on Friday. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, our freshmen got to go on their first college visit. Unfortunately, I had to miss it for a funeral, but um, that is my favorite part of Abbott, is taking students on college visits. Um, so they went to Fort Hayes State. We had 19 students go on the trip, and all reports said they had a wonderful time. Um, I got 14 surveys back from our kids, and one of the questions at the end of the survey is, do you think you could see yourself going to this college? Um, and there were 10 like outstanding yeses. They were so excited about Fort Hayes State. Um, and four said no. And I always tell our kids, it's so important that you, you learn what you do like about a school just as much as you learn what you don't like about a school. Um, because our kids are being thrown a lot of different college choices. And so the ability to go visit schools and make a decision and to realize this school is not for me, it's just as important as the skill to realize this school is for me. Um, so that was great. Um, and then I brought two awesome AVID seniors with me to ask them some questions. So come on up. Uh, this is Ruben and Alex. 